All right, so Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to all of the uh, participants uh, to the webinar on MOOC and online education, uh, education pandemic, uh, which is actually co-organized um, by the Center for Global Online Learning and also Center for um, Academic Development and Training, CADU THM. So today we are actually very honored to have uh, our invited uh, speaker all the way from USM, uh, Penang. And also, uh, how are you, Prof. Prof. Karim? Okay, Alhamdulillah. Hope you're doing good, yeah. Yep, and also to the professors and also my fellow colleagues and also um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is my pleasure to be the uh, moderator for today's seminar. And I'm Doria Islamia Rosli. And on behalf of the webinar uh, organizing committee, we would like to extend a very welcome, a warm welcome to all of you. So we really appreciate uh, for your time, for being in this seminar throughout your busy schedule. All right, so we hope that um, you will gain a, a fruitful insight and information uh, throughout uh, this session, inshallah. Okay, so before we begin our session, uh, for Muslims, participants, um, and friends, let's we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, and also for non-Muslim participants, uh, you may recite uh, your own prayers, Al-Fatiha. Yeah. Uh, before we begin uh, our webinar, uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sabaria um, as the representative of um, the Director of Global Online, as a professor, Ruslan. She couldn't be here with us today because uh, I think she needs to attend the MEPTA meeting today uh, at the same time, Prof. Oh. And also, a um, few words uh, to welcome Yang Bahagia, Prof. Uh, Dr. Abdul Karim. Please welcome Dr. Sabaria. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Selamat datang Prof. Okay, terima kasih juga kepada semua rakan-rakan akademik, uh, khususnya pemangku-pemangku program dan MC yang sudi menolakkan masa uh, dan uh, hadirah untuk uh, bersama Prof. Pada hari ini. So, pengarah kali mohon maaf kerana tidak dapat hadir pada saat ini dan beliau terima salam kepada semua dengan lafaz Assalamualaikum. Okay, hari ini uh, kami rasa bertuah kot kerana uh, diberi peluang untuk mendengar perkongsian uh, ilmu daripada hero kita, hero online education uh, The top 50 influencer in education ni, Asia Pacific tu So agak apa, kagum lah, berkejut juga lah bila uh, pelawakan saya diterima ni kan So saya uh, rasa sangat apa, uh, seronok lah untuk uh, bersama apa hari ini. So untuk hari ini uh, kebanyakan lah Peserta kita terdiri daripada uh, pembangun umum uh, dan MC dan arahkan akademik lainnya. So sebenarnya uh, UPHM ni uh, telah membangunkan MU uh, dari 2015 uh, dan uh, telah menghasilkan uh, lebih kurang 33 kursus. Uh, itu melalui online dan pada tahun ini kita teruskan uh, MU dan MC dengan lebih banyaklah kursus uh, yang sedang dibangunkan. So, pada kala MC juga, kita sedang mempergiatkanlah untuk dibangunkan uh, sebanyak yang boleh pada tahun ini. So, uh, dengan uh, ruang uh, dan peluang uh, yang uh, dapat dimantap, uh, dapat memantapkan lagi lah ilmu uh, dan kemahiran. Kemahiran sebagai pembangun bahan digital, digital di dalam PMT kepada pelajar dan masyarakat. So, dengan webinar ini, uh, maksudnya uh, dengan uh, 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 open access ini uh, sebagai uh, nilai tambah uh, supaya dapat menutup vaksin, uh, vaksin kan, vaksin dan semangat untuk terus berkarya uh, dalam PMT khususnya kepada pembangun-pembangun bahan digital ataupun online education ini. So Alhamdulillah, uh, moga uh, knowledge sharing ini daripada Prof dapat memberi manfaatlah kepada semua uh, dan kami sangat menghargainya. Semoga mendapat aura positif uh, dari sesi ini. 
So, sekian daripada Global. Terima kasih. Alright, thank you very much Dr. Sabaria. Okay, so before we begin, uh, let me allow me uh, to introduce uh, our distinguished um, speaker, uh, Prof. Dr. Abdul Karim Alias. Eh? Okay, so Prof. Dr. Abdul Karim Alias uh, is actually a professor of food technology at the School of Industrial Technology, USM. Uh, he is actually currently the director of the Center for Development uh, of Academic Excellence, uh, also known as CADE USM. Okay. Um, and he has been teaching at USM for over 26 years and received um, several awards throughout his academic career. And he has been the recipient for the prestigious National Academic Award in 2008 for teaching from the Ministry of Higher Education. And also he was the among uh, the top 50 educators in Asia Pacific in 2015 uh, from the Tarakan Asia. And also the Malaysia's Rising Stars uh, in, in 2015 award. And at the national level, he is a master trainer for ACAP and involved as a writer for Malaysia Education Blueprint uh, 2015 until 2025. That was um, actually mainly used and referred by all the academicians right now. And also he led um, the development of Malaysia MOOC as a co-chairman of the National Technical Committee. Um, that at that time, I think uh, most of the time actually pairing uh, with uh, Adam Rimo of learning uh, at that time, especially focus on MOOC. And I think everyone is uh, very familiar with Prof. Dr. Karim, who bring forward eh, the initiative of micro credential um, if I'm not mistaken, back uh, from 2017 to 2018. So these are actually uh, our Sifu uh, who actually bring um, the initiatives of the micro um, in Malaysia, I would say. So um, also, Prof. Dr. Karim is a strong advocate of leveraging the internet um, and as an alternative medium for learning and teaching. And um, I think I would also call um, Prof. Karim as uh, our academic YouTuber. Yeah, um, because uh, if I allow me to mention this as well, um, as in October 9th, um, 2020, his teaching videos uh, on YouTube channel have received around, eight, six, um, eight, um, around 860,000 viewers uh, from over 190 plus countries. One so, million already. Huh? By the way, bro? Only one million. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's um, increasing rapidly uh, after the pandemic, post-pandemic, and etc. So um, well done and job well done, bro. So um, yeah, without further delay, I would like to pass and hand over to you. Um, and I think everyone, um, please stay and enjoy the session. All right, back to you, bro. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Terima kasih, Dr. Doria. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh dan uh, selamat pagi selamat sejahtera kepada sahabat-sahabat academic lecturers uh, from UTHM. UTHM ni uh, satu-satunya universiti uh, UA lah dalam kalangan UA daripada 20 tu yang saya belum belum pernah menjejakkan kaki. Oh, so online banyak kali eh, Prof. Eh? Ah, tapi online ni uh, mungkin, I don't know, ini kali pertama, <laughs> kali kedua tak pasti. Tapi physically, I have not been there for whatever reasons, for some reasons. Tapi yang UA lain semua dah pernah pergi, dah banyak kali dah. Uh, private university. But UTHM, for some reason, I have not uh, been there. Ada peluang dulu, ada sekali kot. Tapi yeah. somehow tak jadi ke apa, saya tak ingat ya. Eh. Jadi, tak apalah, uh, dapat virtual pun uh, bertemu dengan Uh, sekumpulan uh, ahli akademik daripada UTHM itu pun satu peluang yang uh, sangat bagus dan terima kasih kepada Dr. Doria, Dr. Sabaria, uh, Sekretariat yang sudi untuk menjemput saya uh, kononnya untuk memberikan uh, booster vaksin <laughs> booster vaksin <laughs> suntikan semangat uh, tak pastilah sama ada saya boleh memberikan suntikan itu Tapi kalau tanya saya personally, as far as MOOC is concerned, uh, my credential is another thing. As far as as far as MOOC is concerned for USM, kami masih lagi uh, amat bersemangat, bersemangat yang tinggi. Uh, malah kami terus, uh, oh kata, we push for this uh, MOOC agenda even more aggressively in the last uh, two or three years even. 
So um, we are still istiqamah. So uh, let's see whether you know I can share our USM's enthusiasm, my own enthusiasm. I'm sure we are sharing the same enthusiasm because I was told that the participants today are among those so-called the advocates, the champions, the, the circle or the pool of people who have been doing online course MOOC yeah? or even micro credential. So uh, I guess we are in the group of people of uh, like-minded sharing the same uh, vision, the same mission, and I hope the same enthusiasm as well. Because um, as so some people say, and, and I'm, I'm actually holding to it very strongly, you can see these words on my website actually, uh, nothing much can be done without enthusiasm. So we need that enthusiasm, we need that uh, motivation, we need that fire burning inside us uh, to keep us, uh, you know, keep our interest, keep our motivation, doing what we feel the right thing to do. So whether MOOC is the right thing to do or not, if you ask me, yes. And I hope I can share some of the, the aspiration or the motivation behind it, why I am still strongly advocating MOOC and now my credential. But before that, um, I hope if you don't mind, uh, I've shared a link in the in the photo chat. Kalau boleh buat the survey ni dulu sebelum sebelum kita proceed. Because uh, I, I would like to see or get some uh, kind of baseline uh, information or some idea. Uh, where are you? in the context of MOOC and online education. So can we take about one minute because it's a very short one or the most two minutes? Yeah, the link can be found in the chat. That one, please do this short survey. Yeah. So let's wait for about maybe one minute. It's a question about uh, MOOC mainly, yeah, an online course. And this will give some idea of uh, how far is your journey, your involvement in MOOC and also online education. Um, meanwhile, while, uh, while uh, I'm, I'm going through the presentation, feel free to ask any questions in the chat, or you can also unmute the microphone and interject anytime, yeah, anytime, just interject. So that would make this happen uh, because uh, I think it's good to have conversation uh, about MOOC. So we don't have we don't have to wait till the end. But I, I guess nanti mungkin dalam pukul sepuluh tu kita berhenti sekejap lima minit, yeah, short break for five minutes. Okay, kau lah. Huh? Okay. Uh, phase two at least. 15 minit kan kena habis setengah jam eh. <laughs> Yalah waktu itulah kita nak bersosial pun kan, berkenalan, berkenalan sambil minum-minum kan. kadang-kadang uh, dalam waktu itu pun tak ada idea yang banyak. <coughs> Networking can happen during that uh, informal conversation kan. Tapi untuk online ni kita 15 minit cukup kan eh. Because time is very precious uh, for for all of you, I'm sure. Okay, bro. Dah ni exam dah ada kan? Oh, tak ada, tak ada exam uh, Patang sikit lah kau eh <laughs> Lapang sikit lah, nak kata lapang betul tu tidak lah kan uh, There's no There's no such thing as Lapang lah dalam akademik ni kan Alright, so okay, Kita berapa, ada berapa? Uh, 50 lebih ya eh? So kalau ya. boleh, kita tengok dapat dapat dalam 30 pun jadilah Selalunya bila dalam online ni bila Oh, masih 20 responses eh? Haa, ah, apa ni ah, Sometimes about 20% je 20% 20% You 
rayu lah macam mana pun please respond please respond uh, so when come to engagement eh you you won't get 100% kalau you get 80% tu dah dah lucky lah ya yeah? <laughs> so some people would probably probably prefer just to listen and at the same time doing other things that's i think we have to accept that fact the fact that online eh you cannot control you know Uh, you can try your best to engage your students uh, tapi jangan merasa kecewa lah kan kalau you you only get 50% only responding so okay i get that number already 30 so maybe we can have a quick look ini pun baguslah untuk Dr Sabaria dan juga Dr Doria ya yang in charge paling bahagian online ni so how long you have been teaching ni just to get some ideas so kalau okay. tengok di sini ni Nine one nine point yang pepul ni more than 20 years ah ini orang orang macam profesor lah ya yeah. profesor mm-hmm. ni orang lama lah kan itu uh, kuat lah so yang uh, yang baru baru ni ah uh, yang ini yang kita nak kena nurture ni ya yeah. yang aku ni doktor Dori Doria doktor Sabaria kita nak kita nak capture this this people uh, kita ajak dia kita masuk hop in less than five years ni yang warna biru kemudian yang warna merah tu between six to ten years Uh, ini pun masih lagi orang kata apa ni energy masih banyak lagi ni so kita kena rope them in rope them in 11 to 15 years yang ini dia dah ada dia punya orang kata apa dah dah stable uh, so mungkin kita boleh juga bawa orang yang macam ini sebab dia orang dah ada pengalaman dah ada apa ni dia boleh menjadi mentor ya yeah? kumpulan yang merah dengan yang orange ni dia orang ni boleh menjadi mentor kepada yang lain-lain ni So apa ni kumpulan ini sebenarnya yang perlu yang juga perlu kita uh, apa orang kata bekerjasama dengan dengan mereka lah. Yang hijau ni yang lagi pengalaman 16 to 20 years. Okey. So um, tapi ada mungkin kadang-kadang kalau dalam kalangan staff ni yang 16 to 20 years ni uh, kadang-kadang dia orang ni dah apa ni macam tak begitu berminat sangat ya especially yang very senior ni dia tak begitu berminat sangat untuk online dan sebagainya so ini kita kena perlukan lebih kerja kuat sikit lah untuk convince them and from my observation from my experience um, dia orang ni cuma dia tak ada awareness tapi bila dia dah mula nampak dan tunjukkan contoh-contoh yang penting tunjukkan contoh tunjukkan contoh-contoh pada orang ni and then pelan-pelan kita bawa dia orang dan uh, bila dia orang mula buat dan dia dah nampak macam mana pelajar-pelajar dia sendiri gunakan as part of the blended learning uh, dia orang dah mula dapat that appreciation penghayatan dan penghargaan tu baru dia kata buka mata and these people ni from my experience yang 16 to 20 years ni many of them came back to me came to me and dia kata oh prof thank you lah i, I must thank you for 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 kind of getting me into this thing and now is really now i really appreciate lah dia dah ada 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 setengah tu yang kumpulan yang purple ni yang nak pencen 3 4 tahun lagi bila dia dia baru discover dia baru discover ni uh, online learning MOOC dan sebagainya then suddenly dia suddenly dia nampak the value wow dia kata prop dia jumpa saya kat, kat dalam masjid prop saya dia kata, nak cakap terima kasih betul nak terima kasih dengan prof dia kata sebab apa ni you are very persistent you still come on hajar orang apa semua for long time dia kata I, i ignore tapi bila saya dah mula dia kata dia datang one of our training kena dia cuba dia kata wah menyesal saya menyesal saya tak buat benda ni awal sekarang ni saya rasa lama tinggal lagi 2 tahun 3 tahun nak pension ni i wish i had more time there ha ah, tu dia so kita kena istiqamah lah bila kita dalam role peranan kita untuk mengajar orang ni dia sebenarnya dia satu dakwah juga satu dakwah sebenarnya tapi dakwah dalam erti kata lain lah dakwah untuk mengajar orang ke dalam online uh, and and you have to convince people why this is no longer an option you can use online to complement not to substitute tak ada siapa kata tak pernah kita kata benda ni untuk substitute tapi kita untuk complement tambah nilai tapi kita kena tunjukkan macam mana yang tambah nilai tu dan kita sendiri kena buat so I in USM I walk the talk 
I do first then I show. I not just you're not just telling macam kita dengan student kita lah. You don't tell, you show. Nah, lah, macam tu. So kita that's why I I ask you to do this survey so that we can get some idea lah. In terms of the demographic ni macam mana? Oh okay. So tapi yang ini dalam kalangan yang mungkin orang yang dah terlibat dalam MOOC. So mungkin this doesn't give the the true picture. Tapi kalau kita tengok overall the population of UTHM, kalau kita tengok dari segi ni, then you know how 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 much work that you need to do to bring this purple and the green ni into the apa ni orang kata the the so called the mainstream yang akan menyokong agenda online education. Because ah uh, kita kita tidak kita tidak boleh melupakan mereka. Kita tidak boleh meminggirkan mereka. Sebab dia hanya tidak ada awareness, kurang awareness. Bila dia tidak ada awareness, dia nampak macam benda ni, macam mana benda ni, you know how powerful this can can you know can can help them in can help the students, can help them as well. Itu je. Ya. Yeah. So how much do you know about MOOC? Programming. Ya yeah, ya, yeah. betul betul. Uh, mungkin saya ada satu soalan dulu eh. Boleh uh, boleh. Anytime eh. Anytime yeah. kita sembang ni. Eh. Ya, yeah. uh, mungkin saya ada satu soalan sebab uh, kalau kita tengok tadi yang data warna biru dengan warna purple tu tadi, mungkin saya rasa ada beberapa model yang mungkin kita dah pernah embed juga di Jam. Contoh kita akan akan pairkan dengan yang golongan uh, purple dengan golongan biru contoh kan. Jadi how effective is this kalau dekat USM Prof? Uh, yes. Yeah. To some extent that's what we are doing also. Um, <coughs> pada peringkat PTJ. Kita buat daripada peringkat PTJ dan kita minta kerjasama dekan untuk melihat okey the, the dia dia start dengan macam macam ni kalau kita belajar apa ni <laughs> uh, engineering semua kan ramai kan uh, nucleation kan crystallization. So it start dengan nucleation kan. So you have to form that nucleus. So for, so for that uh, dalam satu-satu PTJ tu dia akan ada dua tiga orang lah mungkin. Ini yang betul-betul passionate, yang really into it. So, ini kita start. Kita cakap dengan dekan-dekan semua, you start dengan ni. Start dengan ni. Then, give them, empower them. Empower them. Kemudian, you can ada strategic direction what you want to achieve as far as online learning, online education is concerned for your PTJ. Kalau boleh, alignkan dengan universiti punya ni. Then, you get these people, empower dia orang untuk get others rope in others supaya dia boleh besarkan dia punya nucleus ni bila once you form the nucleus then the next stage is uh, crystal growth <laughs> propagation <laughs> guna guna analogi yang tersenang kan engineer boleh faham uh, so it's about growth uh, dia tak boleh stay yang ramai itu je so in order for for this group to grow uh, you need the ecosystem uh, this is where peranan management pada peringkat school ni pada peringkat PTJ di di institution pakai apa uh, faculty ya uh, untuk untuk menyediakan ekosistem tu dia tak boleh nak, nak suruh orang kata okey saya nak semua orang buat MOOC micro credential tapi tak ada the ecosystem is not there sokongan not there kita okey saya akan berikan sokongan tapi sokongan di mulut je lip service ah uh, baik i- ini ini berdasarkan pengalaman ya Uh, dan ini situasi apa yang saya observe lah juga berlaku di USM ya di sebab saya cakap ni itu kami beri sokongan saya akan beri sokongan sebab apa ni tapi bila staff datang okey kami perlukan ini um, prof kami perlukan ini kami perlukan ini sokongan tidak diberikan so itu lip service saja so macam mana nak grow so the crystal cannot grow <laughs> macam tu so itulah dia jadi um, kena ada langkah-langkah jadi itulah ada mentoring, ada itu semua strategi lah pada peringkat PTJ yang boleh dilakukan. So kalau kita tengok di sini uh, yang kita yang 22% dalam konteks ini, uh, this this is the so called uh, apa orang kata the, the, the nucleus yang boleh propagate ni uh, untuk bawa uh, yang orange dan yang merah ni uh, menjadi orang kata apa the, the Uh, to, to advocate this online to support. Jadi kita nak yang yang biru ni menjadi me, untuk menjana suatu ripple effect. Saya gunakan istilah itu ripple effect. You know, so ripple effect ni memang 
antara istilah yang saya selalu suka gunakan lah. Sebab the analogy is very very good to apa ni kita boleh kita boleh visualize. Bermula daripada satu ripple, you throw one small stone in on apa ni in the water, it will create one ripple. You create uh, you you throw another stone, another ripple. More people throw uh, throw stones in the water, you create more and more ripple, and the ripple will merge to form a big ripple. That's the impact. That's how you apa ni orang kata mengembangkan tu. So have you enrolled in MOOC? Not necessarily completed. Yes. Wow. Uh, ramai pula. Yeah. Yeah. Enroll and completed. Uh, tapi yang ini mungkin daripada kalangan yang yang ini kan. Uh, so yang tak pernah enroll pun buat 32 persen, 33 persen. Have you enrolled and completed? Yes. 23 persen. Not so bad. Not so bad. Have you created created at least one online course that is open to public? 52 percent. Not so bad, Dr. Doria, Dr. Sabaya. So I think, huh, I think you 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 already have quite a I would say a strong knowledge, uh, strong knowledge, strong foundation. Yeah. Uh, cuma perlu di. Uh, you can polish, Prof. Can polish. Can uh, di can injected booster. Inject, yeah. <laughs> Uh, cari booster yang paling kuat. Okay. Okay, kita tengok ni. Do you have the motivation to create an online course that is open to public? Wow. Bagus. Good news. Uh, 16%. I hope I can convince them by end of the program. Kita ada lebih kurang satu. <laughs> yeah, perlu, ini perlukan uh, convincing lah sebenarnya. Bukan mudah nak, bukan mudah nak yakinkan orang. Yeah. Yeah, tapi untuk meyakinkan mereka ni, yang 84% sekarang ni mungkin uh, dia ada range tau. Ada yang very strong advocate. Betul. Ada yang advocate. Ada yang moderately moderately advocate. Ada yang average. So among 84% ni kita boleh kalau boleh kita nak convert dia orang menjadi the strong champion, the strong advocate because kita perlukan This advocacy ini penting tau. Saya punya Nap Chancellor recently kata kat saya, dia kata, wah, Prof, advocacy ini is tiring ya. Eh? I tengok you non-stop dalam HOD punya WhatsApp group tu, orang dah mungkin naik muak dah. Saya post macam-macam pasal micro credential. Pagi tadi, saya post berapa tentang MOOC. Dah kebetulan saya duduk prepare pasal ni kan. Saya post statistik terkini and so on. So saya tahulah mungkin ada setengah tu dah ada orang kata istilah yang kasar tu meluat kan. Meluat atau muak. Tak apalah. Uh, saya jalankan tugas. Uh, pen, pendakwa apa? Pendakwah dakwahan. Dakwah ni, dakwah ni kena istiqamah. Saya dah buat ni berapa belas tahun. Puluh tahun. Uh, in USM ni dah 27 tahun ni. Memang, so why, why people... Look at me, more of online online guy rather than food technologist. Because saya lebih kepada sini. So that is my kind of persona if you wish. So um, kalau kita tengok ni, how much do you know about micro-credential? Uh, this, this is actually the evolution. Uh, how, how this MOOC evolving? So I'll be talking about that a little bit. Uh, because you cannot stay stagnant and there is a reason why MOOC is evolving to micro-credential yang ni kita kena faham okay. so kalau kita tengok ni uh, ok not bad 8% ni mungkin termasuklah Dr. Sabaria dengan Dr. Doria ni yang 8% ni Dr. Zainal semua Dr. Hemi Prof. Isa uh, itu mungkin 8% ada okay. berapa orang ni? 4 orang uh, ok lah uh, Warna merah ni not much. Okay, not much. Don't worry. Uh, yang orange ni, I've heard about it but I have no clue. Pernah dengar apa benda micro-credential ni kan? Uh, 6% never heard of it. Is it some form of alien? <laughs> okay. Have you learned anything about useful from YouTube? Okay. So, you have learned tons of good stuff from YouTube. Did you get some recognition? Uh, yes, someone gave me a certificate. So basically, uh, tujuan saya bertanya ni, uh, when when we talk about micro credential, dia ada dia ada perbezaan kan yang antara micro credential dengan MOOC. 
kalau MOOC you can you can still get a certificate kan tapi kalau micro credential this certificate has some significance itu pasal value because you can kumpul-kumpulkan this certificate in order finally if if you wish you can get formal qualification untuk credit transfer dan sebagainya of course MOOC pun ada credit transfer tapi dia mesti dalam ruang yang 30% maksimum tu tapi kalau micro credential uh, dia kalau kita tengok micro credential guideline yang telah dikeluarkan tu you can get even 100% credit transfer itu ada reasonnya di situ okey kalau kita tengok di sini please indicate if you have taken any course on this so uh, wow open learning paling tinggi kau sera okeylah ya yeah. Domestika Masterclass Future Learn uh, Siapa yang mungkin tak pernah dengar Domestika ni Mungkin selepas ini boleh explore Domestika ni dia based in Spain Dan <coughs> pada peringkat awal Dia orang masih baru Saya rasa less than 2 years Pada peringkat awal dia orang punya course uh, Semua dalam Spanish Boleh kata hampir semua dalam Spanish Tapi saya ambil tiga kursus kat situ Sebab apa tau? Walaupun dalam Spanish, dia ada subtitle. Dan mengapa saya ambil tiga khusus dalam domestika ni? Sebab khusus-khusus diorang ni memang well designed. Dan uh, domestika ni dia fokus, very, very niche. Dia macam konsep uh, apa ni butik universiti lah. Dia very fokus. Dia fokus kepada creative courses. Creative courses. Uh, itu dia punya strength. Dia punya strength. Kalau bila you tengok semua senarai khusus dalam domestika ni, you dah boleh dah boleh agak dah apa dia punya strength. Ha, kalau tengok USM punya MOOC contohnya, tengok wah caca merbah semua ada. <laughs> dia tak fokus kan, dia, dia caca merbah. Tak apalah, dia ikut kita punya ni. So, saya galakkan uh, apa ni, saya memang ambil boleh dikatakan semua platform ni, saya ambil khusus. Yang bayar-bayar lah macam master class ni. Sebab apa tau? Sebab apa saya ambil khusus-khusus ni? Sebab saya jadi spy. Ha, saya nak spy. Ha, saya nak tengok macam mana orang buat. Saya nak dapat pengalaman sebagai pelajar dalam khusus mereka. Kemudian saya bawa pengalaman itu untuk bawa ke dalam khusus kita punya. Ha, itu cara dia. Kita kena tengok orang. Kita kena tengok, kita kena jadi student before kita jadi teacher. Kita kena jadi online student before kita jadi online uh, instructor, online teacher. Student dulu, then jadi teacher. Uh, dia macam tu. Itu sebab, kalau saya tanya, saya tanya tadi soalan ni, have you enrolled and completed at least one MOOC? Yang ni, eh? So, saya cadangkan bagi mereka yang telah terlibat membangunkan MOOC ni, kalau you all belum ambil lagi 3 4 khusus online as a student saya galakkan explore lah sebanyak mungkin kita kena tengok dalam platform Coursera macam mana cara dia for apa ni platform uh, katakan uh, Ivo City macam mana platform uh, Canvas macam mana platform macam-macam ambil future learn dan kita dapat idea macam mana dia orang buat idea inilah kita bawa. Itu sebab saya banyak idea apa pasal on sebab saya dah tinjau, saya dah explore, saya dah spy orang punya sebanyak mungkin. We have to be a student before we become good teacher. Itu dia, ya. Yeah? So, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> saya kira ini pun tak cukup dah. Kita nak tahu di mana kita. So, before we chart our course for the next katakan ni what moving forward orang kata moving forward ni kita kena tengok dulu muhasabah dulu reflect tulis ke belakang dan nilaikan keadaan uh, status kita sekarang then baru barulah kita nampak oh, okay this is our situation now and uh, so pasukan ni lah pasukan Dr. Sabaria Dr. Doria, Doria ni lah uh, moving forward what is our strategic it has to be strategic okay saya ada slide yang tu. Saya sebenarnya slide banyak. Tapi kadang-kadang saya dah cakap lah semua. Baru nak tunjuk slide. Tapi bila ada slide ni orang akan tengok slide. Yeah. So by the way, saya akan share link nanti. 
untuk download saya ada lebih kurang 70 lebih slide ni dengan bimbang uh, semua akan saya akan saya akan beri so tak perlu ambil gambar apa semua ya jadi basically hari ni um, kita nak melihat uh, of course semua orang dah tahu tentang MOOC dalam kumpulan ini I, I, I assume lah tapi untuk orang kata kita revisit balik tadi Dr. Doria kata revisit so kita revisit balik kita dapat semangat je balik kita nak kena faham the, the philosophy kita revisit the philosophy because uh, pada saya falsafah itu penting kalau kita nak betul-betul meyakinkan diri kita kita nak berdakwah ni kita berdakwah kepada semua orang marilah kita bersama-sama uh, uh, venture into online education because janganlah kita hanya duduk dalam physical boundary of our classroom marilah kita stretch out kita punya bubble stretch out kita punya boundary dan kaedah yang paling mudah adalah involve dalam open education tapi bila kita nak terangkan pada orang nak yakinkan orang ni nak get the buy in so to speak falsafah itu why the why behind it why we are so in, you know obsessed with this kenapa you know orang kata saya obsessed ya yeah, saya obsessed <laughs> saya mengaku saya obsessed sebab mengapa sebab saya nak gunakan online ini sebagai suatu dakwah dan suatu misi I am very clear with my purpose and my mission. In fact, I hope Allah panjangkan umur saya bagi saya kesihatan sebab saya nak create sebanyak mana content yang boleh saya nak bagi sebanyak mungkin. Itulah sebagai ilmu yang dapat saya tinggalkan antara tiga perkara yang kita bawa selepas kita mati. Eh, tiga ke empat. <laughs> kan? Antara, satunya adalah ilmu yang ditinggalkan, yang dimanfaatkan. Tapi kita Bukan ilmu agama sebab saya tak ada banyak ilmu agama Tapi ilmu-ilmu yang lain Tapi dimanfaatkan Itulah falsafahnya Then of course the MOOC primer ni Just revisit about MOOC again From MOOC to micro-credential micro Yang ni the, the the bridge Kind of The the evolution Things evolve So the how how MOOC is evolving now to micro-credential Adakah itu bermakna you know, Kita nak lupakan MOOC Ya yeah? Dalam dalam grup ini peserta kita ni adalah wah 80 dah. Uh, do we have international people uh, expatriate dalam ni? Ada ada foreign ni juga prof. Oh okay okay. So in that case. Sorry. Ada seorang dua orang. Saya campur campur ni uh, apa ni? So uh, it, it it has to evolve. You cannot remain stagnant. Remember from nucleus to form the crystal it has to grow the propagation you know the crystal will propagate and grow it's all about growing kita start MOOC in 2014 basically so if you don't have a strong champion in dekat UTM uh, sorry UT sorry UTHM then it will die away natural death natural death you need the champion but the champion come and go That's why sekarang ni dekat USM saya cuba nak nak ada that the 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 other champions sebab insyaallah saya tahun depan will will go you know that, that is a natural progression ya yeah? pencen dan sebagainya so when i go i don't i don't want the MOOC and micro credential go towards towards that path natural death no i want other people to pick up or take up the baton so i can pass on the baton to many other champions that will keep the mook spirit the mook agenda micro credential alive itu yang penting okay so from mook to micro credential and the way forward post pandemic actually tajuk ni sebenarnya is not very accurate mook and online education in post pandemic because <laughs> you all know very well we are still in it we are still in it Uh, this morning, this month, last night, I, I heard someone say, yeah, soon we are going to endemic. Bila lagaknya, yeah? we are still very much in the pandemic, in the thick of it. So, uh, 
I, I put the slide uh, when when I put the slide. Yeah, yeah. In the good old days before the pandemic, but apparently we are still in the pandemic. <laughs> but I wish, yeah. Sekarang kita bayang lama. It's only about two years ago. Huh? What in the good old days before the pandemic? Wow. Macam ada coin baru, endemic lah, bro. Uh, the endemic. But we are not yet there, I think. We are not yet there. But Singapore, mungkin they all kata we are already, accept the fact that we are now in the endemic. Yeah. But still very much, kan, kita kata, sekarang ni kita dah, every, every, apa ni, macam webinar, ke apa, bila dah habis, atau meeting, uh, stay safe, stay safe, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is a new buzzword, kan? Stay yeah. safe, then I tambah, stay productive. Because And you don't, vaccinated. Uh, <laughs> Stay productive and stay healthy. Stay home. So, <clears throat> so bila pandemic, if I, that that tarikh keramat, eh, that magic, well not magic, uh, that that date, eh, 18 March 2020, our first, uh, sorry, our folk, uh, first apa ni, uh, MCO, eh, PKP, and and uh, that is that marks the beginning of we are being kind of confined. And then those who have not bothered to look at online, suddenly, suddenly, well, they they found themselves in that situation where, ah, apa nak buat ni? Everyone go online. And I was in the position, sama dengan my timbalan, Dr. Azida, we were overwhelmed. Oh, then we realized these are the people who really never bothered never bothered to learn anything about online and then suddenly they have to they have to transition from face to face to online and this is where mook step in to save the day and this is what i get from uh, sent uh, ni from from apa tu website uh, apa tu So, uh, ini apa ni? Apa ni? Apa nama website tu? Uh, lupa pula. Class Central. Yeah. The Class Central, kalau nak tengok the latest stats on MOOC. Eh. Jadi, tweet Dawal Shah ni, the, the admin of Class Central, dia tweet, the last 48 hours have been crazy. More than a million learners have used Class Central to find their next course. In one day, we receive more traffic Then the entire month of February. Itu ada early tempat tu. 18 March 2020. Remember that date? Kita punya MCO. So, suddenly, as millions suddenly found themselves with free time on their hands during the pandemic, they many turned to online course. Of all the learners that ever registered on MOOC platform, one third did so in 2020 making 2020 MOOCs most consequential year since 2012 2012 was hailed as the year of the MOOC then lepas tu senyap so it is kind of MOOC is slowing down and some probably kind of uh, <laughs> dying until 18 March 2020 boom suddenly MOOC came to the rescue. So, as of ini report 2020, 2021 belum keluar lagi daripada Class Central, uh, we have what? 16,000, 16.3,000 courses spread over all over the world, many spread over 90, 950 universities and we have 118 million students based on enrollment, I guess. But of course, maybe uh, the completion rate is is much much lower. But this is these are the numbers. Yeah, these are the numbers. So, uh, USM proudly joined the bandwagon and still very much in there. Uh, our MOOC USM and this is our contribution to that statistic. Yeah, these are the contribution to the statistic. Uh, of course, we cannot measure impact here. You know, the real impact we do not know. We do not know. And what we do in USM to keep the spirit alive is to, because we cannot force people. That's the thing. 
but we can incentivize them. So bila kita buat bukan banyak pun, hadiah pertama rm ringgit plus sijil, hadiah kedua rm hadiah ketiga rm Tapi Alhamdulillah, bila, oh yang ni 2021 punya, yang 2020 punya, kita start dulu 2020 lah. Bila kita dah tengok dia slowing down kan, tak boleh ni, tak boleh jadi ni kan. Uh, every year kita still get people to do. Itu pun kita personally, personally, saya Dato' Azizah personally, approach the dean, you know, uh, please, please, uh, macam tu, please. Baru dah dapat dua, tiga orang buat. So, bila kita buat book challenge ni, 2020, oh, kita dapat uh, baik kurang apa ya, 20 lebih. Tahun ni kita buat lagi sekali, uh, kita dapat 7, 80 lebih. 80 lebih. So, tadi tutup bulan Oktober ni. So, inilah cara kami buat salah satu inisiatif. Tahun nah, depan, insya Allah kita nak bagi hadiah yang lebih besar lagi. Kita ada sponsor dan sebagainya. Hopefully di tahun depan dapat ah uh, dapat apa double. Okay, mama nak ni, mama tengok doktor pun ada ni. Okay, alright, uh, okay. So this is what we do uh, to keep things going. Uh, ini contoh yang tahun lepas punya. So kita war-war ke, kita promote yang pemenang-pemenang ni semua. So nampaknya bila kita buat tahun ni, wow, berganda kita dapat ya. Eh. Bukan berganda, tiga kali ganda. Tiga kali ganda kita dapat penyertaan. Hopefully tahun depan kita nak increase hadiah. Uh, InsyaAllah ada sponsor dan sebagainya. Sponsor lebih luar untuk gandakan hadiah. Supaya dia jadi lebih menarik lagi. So kita akan terus champion the book. InsyaAllah. Dan mungkin uh, apa ni... Um, UTHM mungkin ada strategi yang tersendiri. Tapi apapun, the bottom line is kena ada champion dan kena ada sokongan semua pihak dan uh, the, we have to keep the fire burning. Semarakkan terus. Okay, semarakkan terus. Saya check UTHM punya uh, tapi saya tak dapat tengok statistiknya sebab uh, uh, you all gunakan apa tu, uh, MOOC ya. Eh? So, tapi I'm sure you have all the, the statistics lah. So, UTHM, whoever listening now in this webinar, uh, this is what I want to say to all of you. If you are doing it now, do it more. If you are not doing it now, let's start to do it. Because uh, you cannot just look and see what other people are doing in, in you know in online or more micro credential and so on they there are many good reasons why you should and you must do MOOC and also micro credential I, I will share some of the reasons yeah and this is from my personal experience how much this has impacted uh, me and how much it has given me kind of the motivation and the energy and the reason the reason to 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 live longer because i want to do more of this yeah because i want to do more of this and i'm i'm very happy to to retire next year because i want to use the time that i have to create more of this inshallah in my own area food technology and in also to champion, to continue champion and advocating online education. And truly from my heart. Not for any external motivation, external incentive. If you start asking what's in it for me, how much point do I get for promotion and so on, then you will do it for that but it's not sustainable because the moment the incentive not there or not good enough, then you will stop doing it. Or if you are doing it, you are not doing it from your heart. So you don't put the best into it. You will just do so-so. It's a big difference. Doing it something from the heart, something that you do it because you want to do it, but another doing it 
for the external incentive. It, it is a is a big difference, huge difference. Okay, so I hope that that's why the philosophy itu penting. Okay, kalau kita tengok di sini daripada kelas central juga kita tengok lagi apa the most popular cause during this pandemic turned out to be the science of well-being with over 2.5 million enrollment. Who offer this course? Bukan calang-calang. Yale University. Yale. Eh? The signs of well-being. 2.5 million enrollment. Wah, banyaknya pahala orang yang buat ni. Okay. One fifth of the 100 most popular courses launched in 2020 are directly related to COVID-19. See how these people really orang kata apa, uh, grab the opportunity. Ini yang kita kata, uh, sometimes we don't see the, the low-lying fruits tu. Kita tak grab. Kita tak nampak benda yang dekat dengan kita, kita nak nampak peluang tu, kita tak nak grab. Kita buat the je orang kata kan. Eh? Buat tak tahu je. Ah, tak apa orang lain akan buat. Orang lain akan buat. Inilah uh, saya nampak attitude lah macam ni kan, um, yang kita kena ubah tu. Itu sebab orang kata mindset tu. The mindset itu penting. ya. Yeah? Bila dah ada mindset tu betul, barulah kita tengok dari segi skill set. Bila skill set ni dah okey, no? kita kena ada dua lah, skill set dengan tool set. Dua ni kena ada. Barulah kita cakap tentang teknologinya, toolsnya dan sebagainya. Tapi kalau dia mindset dah tak ada kat situ, <laughs> dia tak jadilah, dia tak jadi apa. Dia tak sustainable lah. So kita nak sustain, itu yang penting. Buat, setakat buat, boleh. Tapi orang kata takut tak buat micro-credential. Oh, nak kena buat micro-credential sebab semua orang cakap tentang micro-credential. So jom kan kita buat. Sekat buat je. Kemudian bila dah buat, okey lah kita dah buat dah. Okay. Oh, your, your university I got micro-credential. Yeah, yeah, we have micro-credential. <laughs> Tapi dia buat sekat buat, dia tak ada strategic direction. Dia tak ada, tak ada yang saya panggil strategic intent tu tak ada. Kita tak mahu macam ni. Nak buat, kita kena ada satu haluan dan suatu tujuan yang can serve something. So kalau kita tengok di sini, the top cause with over 1 million enrollment is John Hopkins COVID-19 contact tracing followed by Harvard. Bukan calang-calang yang buat benda ni. Tapi adakah bermakna kita yang orang kata ni, uh, UTHM, non jauh di Johor contohnya. Adakah tak layak nak buat benda ni. No, siapa yang kata tak layak? Siapa yang melayakkan kita atau tidak melayakkan kita? Kita yang tak nak buat. Termasuk USM lah. Kan? So, kalau kita tengok ni, the second year of MOOC ni, maksudnya apa tau? The second year of MOOC ni, macam the second life. The first life tu 2012. Apabila MOOC, wow, semua, everyone talking about MOOC, 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 mantra dia. Kemudian uh, hilang dah MOOC. Tapi bila datang pandemik, Uh, MOOC again yeah, as we saw from the statistic tadi so 2012 funding 100 million 2020 900 million learners 2 million 180 million university partners 40 950 courses 250 16.3 million revenue kosong now hundreds of millions <laughs> mana datangnya ni because dulu orang ambil sampai habis tapi dia tak tak boleh pun ambil sertifikat sebab tak perlu pun sertifikat ni but now because of lot of people got apa ni di 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 hilang kerja dan sebagainya jadi dia nampak value of online ni dan value of the certificate now walaupun MOOC kan so dia boleh gunakan dia untuk untuk orang kata dalam CV dia dan sebagainya so now things have changed drastically but we are still sitting on our laurel You know, as far as Malaysia, saya nampak barulah nak cakap tentang micro-credential dan sebagainya. Kemudian confuse pula. Uh, MOOC, micro-credential sama ke, Prof? Uh, lah, okay, tak apa, tak apa. Tak apa, tak apa. Don't worry, don't worry. I will explain. <laughs> okay. Um, so, nampak tak ada growth of MOOC? Exponential. Then, ini dia punya subject area. Yeah, subject area. So, I guess uh, macam UTEM, sorry, UT, sorry, eh? UTHM, UTEM, sebut UTEM yang akan marah, you all, 7.6% engineering. Tapi dia macam ni tau, 
uh, walaupun you all dia punya apa ni orang kata Anton kan, strength dia engineering kan, tapi jangan lupakan yang ini pun actually maybe you can do all these different areas okay? tapi you kena ada niche so niche mungkin engineering lah tapi Anton lain pun nak buat engineering juga Politech pun mungkin nak buat engineering in fact Politech lagi depan so what is your differentiation Uh, then differentiation you punya USP kalau orang marketing dipanggil USP unique selling point yes unique selling point unique selling uh, apa P tu apa unique selling point lah kan USP uh, ataupun value proposition lah value proposition UTHM MOOC or micro credential When when people talk about UTHM MOOC, kita orang kata oh UTHM punya MOOC ni memang bagus, tapi apa dia yang bagus? Dia apa ni engineering punya ni? Ah, kita kita nak that association tu branding lah. Semalam baru saya cakap, saya cakap pasal branding dengan dengan UTM, sorry dengan dengan UTM lagi, dengan UMT, dengan UMT. Uh, I talk about visibility and branding uh, semalam kot. Eh no no semalam day before semalam cuti kan. Ah, so maknanya, what is your branding? MOOC untuk UTHM punya branding apa dia? Branding bermaksud apa value-nya dan apa orang boleh associate. Kalau Volvo, orang kata Volvo for life. Itu dia punya tagline. Sebab apa orang orang uh, tagline dia Volvo for life? Sebab orang associate dia dengan safety. Dia very strong, body dia very strong and so on kan? Ha, macam tu. So kalau UTHM MOOC, USM MOOC, orang akan associate dengan apa? So macam USM MOOC, hopefully orang kata, oh everything about sustainability apa semua, you pergi USM. Tapi belum lagi lah kat itu pun, tak sampai lagi. UTHM apa? Ha, they, we we have to find that. Itu yang saya panggil tadi, strategic intent. Strategic intent tu bermaksud begitu. Kita define kita punya niche, kita punya strength. Ha, macam tu. So saya, saya cukup dah dulu, setakat tu kita break dulu. Uh, 5 minit, 6 minit macam tu and we come back pukul 10, 5 minit boleh kan Dr. Loria, Dr. Sabaya? Boleh bro Boleh eh? Okay. So kita come back 10, 5 minit boleh? Okay, alright oh. So saya disappear dulu ya? Eh? Ya, yeah. so kita akan jumpa yeah. 11, 5 minit macam tu eh? Okay ah, Sorry, 11, 5 minit? Yes, yes Ya, yeah, 11, 5 minit Okay
hebat ni dengan micro credential ni UTHM kan kena buat lah. UTHM kan kurangnya kan ha, dia dia tak boleh kalau mindset macam tu maknanya buat setadar buat so pada rakan-rakan semua sahabat-sahabat UTHM semua now knowing that situation and the statistic the kind of the status semasa now daripada 2012 eh, sorry 2000 ya 2012 bermula the year of MOOC Kemudian Malaysia pula launch 2014, kita punya Malaysia MOOC 20. Universiti terlibat, masuk UTHM juga. ya. Yeah. Tapi kemudian kind of slow down macam tu. So, now marilah kita. <laughs> macam ahli politik pula ya. Marilah kita bersama-sama untuk revive, memberi nafas baru. Memberi nafas baru terhadap satu usaha yang bagus ini, usaha murni ini. And... Uh, <coughs> We are not doing it just for for the sake of it, but we are doing it to to support the the agenda because we want to not only educate our students yang full time dalam dalam kelas kita ni, but we want to educate the world. Our knowledge is valuable. Kita tak mau confined within that small group or small boundary. So a call to action. I want everyone to join me. Yeah, join me together on this mission to become a global educator. It's no longer orang kata apa, pensyarah UTHM. Saya pensyarah UTHM. And my world is UTHM. No, your world should be the whole world. Kita ada ilmu. Ilmu yang sedikit ini. Tapi kita nak sebarkan sejauh mungkin, seluas mungkin. So itulah yang saya maksudkan dengan being a global, be a global educator. Dan kita ada banyak cara dan platform dan kemudahan teknologi yang ada sekarang ini. Jadi kita perlu gunakan. Dan apabila kita embark on this one, bila kita bangunkan MOOC dan juga micro credential module, which basically online courses, dia may spin off daripada situ tu banyak. Spin off dia. Kesan-kesan apa ni dia punya kebaikan-kebaikan dia tu. Dan salah satunya dia akan memberi, kita boleh gunakan the same cost tadi. Kita boleh katakan so-called apa ni untuk profit macam micro credential ni kita kita pasarkan kepada pihak luar. Tapi kita boleh gunakan the same ni, the same cost ni untuk kita punya student juga. Complement our blended learning. So Apabila kita dah hasilkan satu kursus itu, ada banyak benda-benda lain yang kita boleh buat dengannya. The spin off tadi itu. Yang penting kita buat, bagi jadi. Buat bagi jadi dan lepas itu ada macam-macam benda kita boleh buat. Ha, itu dia. So, uh, apa ni, walaupun pada peringkat awal memang investment of time, sacrifice, the energy, itu memang banyak. Itu kita tak boleh nak elakkan. Dan saya tidak mahu menggambarkan bahawa I'm sure because most of you have developed MOOC or online course. So you know what does it take, kan? A lot of energy and time. Tapi once kita dah ada, uh, just a matter of apa ni, refining. Uh, refining it, make it better and better. Then you can, let's say you start with MOOC. Then you can expand. Now you have, you have got the skill already. You got the knowledge. So now with that skill and knowledge that you have now, it will become easier, much easier now to create another course or another uh, module, but for micro credential. MOOC should be free and should be free forever. And we want to continue, continue, continue doing MOOC because we want to support the agenda of widening access to education. We want to support the UNESCO United Nations Agenda of Learning for All and SDG4 Quality Education and Inclusive Education So we want to support that but so MOOC should be forever free and it is not the whole course let's say you have one full semester 14 weeks course you just take one topic from that so let's say six topics you take one topic and do it for MOOC so let, that's only one per one one of six of the whole course. Okay, 
But by doing MOOC, you serve the world. You, you, you serve the agenda of SDG and so on. So you can say UTHM is championing also the SDG agenda. You can say that. Okay. But at the same time, we want to do some uh, something similar also online course, but in the form of modular. And we call it micro credential because this one is for profit um, to help the university for income generation. So we are doing both. One is free, one is not free. One is to serve the, the whole world. One is to serve certain target group. For micro credential is for upskilling, for reskilling, for personal development, lifelong learning, and so on. But it's not free, okay? But uh, not everything should be free. Everything has value, okay? The MOOC has value, but we don't put the we don't put the the, the money we don't uh, put the money to to you know as the value, but we give it out for free, okay? So that is uh, basically. So that's why I one of the main reason why I I I, I urge people to do MOOC because. To me, MOOC is the gateway to the world. It's, you do it for the university, for the nation, for people, but at the, same, at the same time, actually, you are doing it for you as well. Because the moment you put up your course, MOOC or my credential online, people will see you, will see you, will see your expertise. You know, if you put up a very good course, that will create the kind of, you know, the branding for you the visibility and the positioning as well. You can position yourself in terms of your research work based on the course that you, you create, that you, you know, that you have created. And, and that's another topic I can talk about two hours on, on branding, visibility, branding, and positioning, which I, I recently I presented to UMT. Yeah? And MOOC is one way for your visibility because it is the gateway to the world and uh, I, I really want to say this with all of you um, my website my online courses has brought me numerous opportunity so now opportunity come knocking my door I don't have to go out and seek for opportunity anymore opportunity keep coming to me in the form of good postdoc from, you know, from uh, from outside Malaysia, in the form of good PhD student, invitation as a keynote, so many things. How do I know? Because when I asked them, oh, how do you know about my work? They said through your website, or I came across your your module, your free module. Uh, they will mention that. Because I've given out a lot of free on online module, free online courses, free MOOCs, and so on. You know, that give you the visibility and the platform as a gateway to the world. Remember about the door just now. You need to have many doors. Website is one door. Your MOOC is another door. Your micro credential is another door. Your blog is another door. So many doors. And therefore, the opportunity opportunity can come in knocking any of the doors. You see, so I, I, you know, I really want to share this, especially for those ten years and and low and 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 less. If you do all this, you know, trust me, you will come back to me and tell me what I'm saying here is really the truth. Nothing but the truth. You must have a very good comprehensive website. Do as many MOOC as you can. Write blogs, article. So I've shared in the chat box example of my blog article and so on. And you know, uh, I will show you one, one blog article as an example. I get invitation as a keynote speaker in the University of Nottingham and, and many more. After they have read my blog article, not research paper, no. blog article, I get invitation as keynote speaker after they read my blog article, believe it or not. 
several uh, many, a few of my uh, invitation for my keynotes came through my blog article some from my website i don't know uh, uh, whether any 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 invitation come from my research publication i don't know <laughs> that i know is through my website through my blog article through my youtube uh, channel uh, about that. and mooc and mooc yeah they said my they are using their mooc uh, my mooc uh, one of the mooc yang facilitate facilitating online to uh, and they, they learn a lot and they use the ideas for their course and so you know this is the thing so that's why i mean by your mooc is the gateway to the world so i also have i have wrote I've written uh, one one blog and uh, giving another presentation uh, with this title, Secret Garden and the Global Classroom. And I have shared the blog article that I have written. I've shared the link in the chat box. I hope you can find time to read. It's quite long, but this when when you read this, it is basically my story. And in I, I wrote the article in such a way that it's a call. It's a call to action. I want to call, urge people to join me. I want to convince them why you should do this, why you want to step out from your secret garden. What is the secret garden? The secret garden is your classroom. I refer to, your, to our classroom because you know what happens in the classroom remain in the classroom. <laughs> Hello, other, you know, if other people try to pick to your classroom, I, I'm in physical classroom, you know, you, 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 you will feel like not comfortable, you know? So it's like our classroom is a, is a secret garden. Everything in this room, stay in this room. But no, it's no longer like that. We want to be part of the global classroom. Our classroom should be the global classroom. So I've written that article. I hope you find time to read it, but uh, this is the, the part of it. So basically, you know, uh, Just uh, the first part of it. Do you want to be a global educator with a strong web presence or would you rather stay in the confined physical space of your classroom? Yes or no? So do you want to educate thousands of learners around the globe or would you rather be the sage of the stage for a small number of students in your classroom? To these two questions, I want you to ask yourself now and answer yes or no. And please type in the chat box very quickly. Because time flies. Actually, we have one question, Prof. Yeah, I can see the question now. Yeah. Just now I hide the chat from uh, Prof. Rosni. Yeah, Dr. Rosni. Uh, yeah. I think she's here. Meanwhile, please answer the question. These two questions that I can see on the screen now, yes or no only. So yes, please type yes. No, please type no. Okay. So Prof, one of the way to read Thin learners until the end of the online course is good engagement between educator and learner by replying to their comments, answering their questions, checking their submission, etc. Is there a way to engage with learners without taking too much of our time because we already have our own students to take care? Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Okay. Uh, and and um, the best, of course, ideally, you're talking about ideally. You want to engage as much as you can. But when you have a uh, true MOOC, will have thousands of students. You know, if you have less than 1,000, maybe you don't call it MOOC, like just online course. Lah. That's the difference between MOOC and just ordinary online course. MOOC means massive. So you can, uh, what, what, what is the kind of uh, demarcation line? <laughs> I would say 1,000 and over, that would be MOOC, lah. okay? And there's no uh, hard and fast rule. So imagine if you have 1,000 or 10,000 or 2 million just now like that cost, that's impossible. You can engage with everyone. But there are a few ways of how people do it. Sometimes they engage a group of graduate students you know, to help them. Uh, but of course, probably if they can do it voluntarily, but otherwise maybe you have to find ways from the university to support the course and so on. So they can help you to kind of respond and engage, in the, you know, with the students. Uh, you yourself probably impossible. Um, even in my class, 60 students, sometimes I find it 
very taxing but i tried you know but very taxing let alone if you have two three four ten MOOCs. <laughs> so you need to find a strategy uh if you search in google there are many ways of doing it uh some uh, using coursera for example using peer uh, peer apa dia panggil tu peer kind of peer assessment and peer peer apa ya peer pedagogy ah peer pedagogy something like that lah so ada banyak cara lah kita boleh buat um we we don't want to get burnt out because of you know that's what happened to professor mushtaq dulu in the early days of mooc so sampai 2 3 pagi dia duduk melayan Uh, apa ni the student sebab nak jawab semua kan wah well, we have to find we have to find other ways lah ya yeah? alright so yes 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 q1 yes q2 yes yes wah wow, betul zaina yes yang panjang tu uh, yes yeah. <laughs> okay i don't think you want to say no but maybe maybe some of you will say no again uh, alright so um ini 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 saya punya blog ni pemulaan lah. The vivid image of a young girl blowing a dandelion flower is so powerful that I imagine myself as the agent of change. So I like to imagine myself as an agent of change, uh, bukan agent of insurance, but agent of change that blow and spread my knowledge and wisdom to help change the world for the better. Am I just dreaming or being too ambitious? No, I don't think so. It is doable. Everyone can do it. Now, you know, nowadays, if everyone can fly, well, of course not now, if everyone can fly, everyone can do MOOC. <laughs> It's not a far-fetched idea. If anyone can fly now, almost everyone can also be. So, bacalah ya, carilah masa baca artikel tu, uh, panjang juga saya tulis tu. Tapi ada benda lain yang saya nak tunjukkan nanti dalam artikel tu. Nanti saya jam sekejap-sekejap. Masa berjalan begitu pantas, kita hanya ada lebih kurang setengah jam. Tapi masa tu saya tulis, saya tulis ni, um, Tahun 2000 berapa entah ya, tapi dalam dalam blog ini, kalau you tengok date tu, I, I jump sekejap, very fast. Kalau tengok date-nya, 2000, mana dia, yang ini, 2019. Ya, sebab yang ini asalnya daripada blog yang lain. Kemudian saya transfer ke dalam sini. Tapi tarikh asal dia, saya tak ingat. Uh, maybe March, uh, maybe around 2015, 2014, saya tulis. Masa tu saya tulis, kemudian uh, apa ni? Masa tu saya kata apa? Uh, masa tu lagi saya kata, I believe in the next 10 years daripada masa saya tulis tu, online education will no longer be considered as an option but will become a new normal. Saya dah gunakan istilah new normal itu waktu itu. Tutup now then new normal. Tak sangka. <laughs> tak sangka ya, eh? betul-betul jadi new normal. Doa, doa, bro. Makbul punya doa. <laughs> Makbul punya. <laughs> okay. Tapi konsep dia ya, yang saya nak yakinkan kepada semua orang ni. Amat dah rugi, kita ada ilmu, dan kita ada cara dan platform dan teknologi dan tools, kita tak nak share. Bukan susah. Satu klik je, kita boleh buat satu video, tiga minit, up to YouTube, dah dapat satu konten. Tak payahlah nak buat proper course pun lagi. Eh, sekejap je dah buat tiga, dah buat konten. Dah. Jadi kita nak share, itu dia spiritnya. I share, therefore I gain. I share, therefore I grow. Remember the, the nucleus? To grow, to become a proper crystal, it must grow, propagate, propagation. So, share whatever little knowledge that you have. This is a call to action. Dalam marketing ni, ada istilah CTA kan? Dalam marketing eh? Call to action. So today, this is my call to action to everyone here and everyone listening Uh, uh, to the recording uh, don't talk about it anymore take action okay take action jump on the bandwagon join me create book kalau tak tahu macam mana 
go and find Dr. Doria, Dr. Zainal yang ada di sana and learn how to do it. Rugi. Kerugian yang amat besar. Ya. Yeah. So, the more we share, the more we gain. Itu memang, I'm sure you have you have some experience already kan. Orang kata the more you bersedekah, the more you rezeki you datangkan. Memang betul. Memang sangat betul. Sangat-sangat betul. Ya. Yeah. So, siapa nak tahu saya punya cerita My Journey Online Education, itu dalam blog tu boleh baca lah. My Journey in Online Education and why I love it so much. So, I want to convince you, I am in love. Okay? In love with online. So, you know, the feeling when you are in love, everything is good, everything is rosy, everything is wangi. Okay? So, online education, when you start doing it, And when you start to get feedback from people around the world, kan? Kalau you tengok dalam video, kalau you wajen lah tengok video-video saya dalam YouTube tu, tengok lah feedback feedback tu. Masya Allah, itulah yang make you really <laughs> keterujaan tu, to keep the fire burning tu, because of knowing people around the world are benefiting from your MOOC. Uh, in this case, from my YouTube video. Itu dia, ya. Yeah. So, saya nak tunjuk uh, satu cerita, ya. Yeah. Satu cerita uh, ini adalah Profesor Walter Lewin. Mungkin many of you probably dah tahu. Mungkin siapa yang pernah dengar saya punya talk ni, selalu saya gunakan video ni sebab saya peminat dia, peminat Walter Lewin. Yeah. Walter Lewin ni Profesor Fizik di MIT dan dia dah besar dah lama dah. So dia ada tulis satu buku ya. Yeah. So saya nak tunjuk kembali kita tonton ni video ni ya. Yeah. Well, my expectations are high. How are we here, Your Honor? You ready for this? Yeah! Three, two, one. And here is the teamwork of an elephant. Oh, I need to hold it here. One, two, relax. Remind you all. Oh, zero. Ten teeth. Forty-five point six plus or minus zero point one seconds. Physics works. I'm telling you, Professor Walter Lewin ni, the popular di MIT. Sebelum tahun 2000 ribu, macam gitu. Sebelum MIT buka khusus-khusus yang mereka ada kepada dunia melalui MIT Open Course Fair. Sebelum sebelum mereka embark on online, before they embark on online uh, open courseware, nobody is outside MIT know about Walter Lewin, only MIT student. And the best education that MIT student can get is within MIT. But when MIT em, embark on open courseware, suddenly Walter Lewin become known through his video that I might, MIT make it available through their MIT Open Courseware platform and also on YouTube. Suddenly, Walter Lewin became a star because when they see all his teaching, his teaching video and so on, Walter Lewin creates a so-called magic moment in his secret garden. Otherwise, it's a secret garden of Walter Lewin. Only MIT students have the privilege to all the best teaching from Walter Lewin. But once They open that secret garden, millions of people around the world get to know about Walter Lewin. So this is some of the feedback from the students. Through your inspiring video lectures, I have managed to see how beautiful physics is, both outstanding, both astounding and simple. A 70-year-old from India emailed 
recently. A fan who said he was a physics teacher from Iraq. Gosh, you are now my scientific father. In spite of the bad occupation and war against my lovely Iraq, you made me love USA because you are there and I mighty is there. Inilah feedback-feedback uh, seperti inilah yang membuat memberikan tenaga, inspirasi dan motivasi kepada saya. Ya, yeah? kalau saya tunjuk balik artikel saya tadi ni, yang ini, ya, yeah? so baca lah nanti ya. Uh, kat bawah tu panjang juga saya tulis ni ah ni ya yeah. saya dapat ah ini contoh-contoh feedback yang saya capture ni banyaklah kat YouTube you all tengoklah nanti tapi saya ambil sedikit prof karim this is the best breakdown explanation i have found on the whole web please provide with your email i have some additional info i need thanks ni tak tahu daripada mana dia ni ya yeah. uh, tapi daripada analytics, saya punya video ni dah lebih daripada 190 buah negara dah. Tengok eh. Orang daripada 100, hampir, what? kita ada berapa? Uh, 200 lebih kan negara. Tapi saya tengok dah 190 lebih lah. Saya tengok statistik tu. The top 10 kat dalam tu ada US, UK dan sebagainya. Ha, ni. Video, ini video teaching my, my teaching video. Ha. Uh, ini itu dalam bahasa ni ini translation the excellent video professor from greeting from peru ini kalau kita tengok it's very educative video thanks for the job robert rapsi ini this is a very nice work but i don't know uh, okay okay macam macam lah okay, boleh tengok dalam tu these are the kinds of feedback yang walter lewin dapat bayangkan kalau kita buat MOOC ni sekarang ni micro credential inilah dia this is how you reach out global learners around the world That's the reason. This is the the reason why everyone should do MOOC. Nothing else. Not for the incentive, for SKT LPP, for promotion, promotion. Does no no. Itu bonus lah. Elok lah universiti kalau bagi juga yang tu. Elok lah. Tapi kalau universiti bagi pun tak apa. I want to do it because this. Okay. Kalau itu datang from your intrinsic motivation, that would be sustainable. And that would, you put your heart and mind to create the best MOOC possible. Dan Walter Lewin ni dia begitu cintakan dia punya subjek, eh? dia tulis buku, For the Love of Physics, From the End of the Rainbow to the Age of Time, A Journey Through the Wonders of Physics. Ha, inilah dia. It is true academic. This is a true academic all the way. So, itu sebab saya kata tadi, <coughs> untuk kita apa ni menjayakan agenda online education ni sebenarnya, MOOC, whatever lah, MOOC ataupun micro-credential, dia kena ada, ada, you must understand that philosophy of education, the philosophy of open education itu. Di mana kita sebagai pendidik, kita sebenarnya dalam dalam satu posisi yang sangat-sangat beruntung. Sebab orang lain bekerja hanya untuk dapat gaji. Kita bekerja dengan ilmu yang kita ada, kita boleh menyebarkan ilmu kita dan ilmu itu kekal digunakan sampai bila-bila dan dia akan membawakan pulangan yang berterusan kepada kita, dunia dan akhirat. Alangkah ruginya kalau kita tidak menggunakan masa yang berbaki ini orang kata tak tahu berapa lama tu jangan tunggu sampai pencen macam tadi yang saya tengok dalam kumpulan yang yang bukan purple dan hijau dari itu lama lagi tu ha, Dr. Doria pun berapa lama lagi Dr. Doria 10 tahun lagi maybe or more so lama lagi tu jangan nak tunggu pencen baru nak buat oh, tak apalah saya nak pencen saya pencen besok baru saya nak buat benda-benda ni berapa lama lagi pencen Uh, 10 tahun ni, wuih lama lagi <laughs> tak usah tunggu start now yeah? so kita kena ada perubahan mindset dan paradigm itu yeah? the philosophy of open education tu sangat penting yeah? saya skip video ni so inilah dia golongan-golongan ni yang uh, kita nak membantu access to education ni masih lagi banyak problem yeah? tapi of course 
nanti kita kata mungkin ada orang kata uh, what's the point doing this online MOOC dan sebagainya there are many still there are many you know people still not have access to internet dan sebagainya janganlah fikir yang sikit tu insyaallah lah lama kelamaan dia akan dapat juga kemudahan tu dia dia nak fikir yang itu sebagai suatu kind of alasan dan nak buat the digital divide is still there but it's closing up is closing up you cannot wait until there is no digital divide no more sebab bila bila saya cakap macam ni orang kata uh, bro kita buat benda ni tapi orang yang ada ni dia dapat tak apalah dapat juga yang lain tu kita cari, cari jalan lain lah now people always come come up with bukan nak kata excuses but so that i don't have to do it <laughs> macam itulah you know of course kita still have this issue Sabah girl stays in three to get internet connection. Jadi sensasi lah kan. Uh, then orang akan jadi this, this, apa ni, group yang apa ni. Dan tengok, ah, si, si, si. Betul tak saya kata? You pernah-pernah buat mock, you pernah ini tengok. Depa ni. Kalau depa jatuh pokok ni, siapa nak bertanggungjawab? Uh, pula dah itu cerita dia. Dia duduk pusing kot lain pula. Kan? Jenuh juga nak menjawab tu. Penat sebenarnya. Advocacy is tiring can be exhaustive you know so kita nak menyokong agenda agenda yang ini ya yeah? learning is sharing learning is caring learning learning is growing sharing is caring sharing is growing the future of open learning is open open means open source you know? so open plus versus proprietary kita nak yang open ni we want to be part of it okay so inilah dia book massive open online courses. Tapi bila kita buat open online course ni, kita buka the public, tak semestinya dia akan jadi MOOC. Kan? Dia bergantung pada demand dan sebagainya. So, okey tak jadi MOOC ni bila dia punya ni? Okey kata. <laughs> When you get a few thousand tu, dia MOOC lah. Dia tak ada satu, apa orang kata, satu line macam tu kan, demarcation tu kan. Tapi the more people you get, the better lah. You know, apa ni, lagi, lagi, lagi menarik apa ni orang kata sebab you dapat memberikan uh, perkongsi ilmu itu dengan hal yang yang lebih luas. Wah, wow. kita ada lagi berapa orang apa? Uh, 10 less than 10 minit ya. We content minutes ya. Alright. So, ini ini sejarah dia lah tak perlu lah saya huraikan daripada yang tadi tu, Walter Lewin tadi tu MIT early 2000 dia jadi star sebab dah terbuka dan uh, sekarang ni ramai kita boleh dapat some of the best education from MIT. Kita boleh claim, oh, I have completed five courses from MIT, you know, dapat certificate from edX. Oh. Okay lah kan, MIT juga, walaupun tak dapat duduk kat MIT. <laughs> Dan yang uh, menyokong agenda open courseware pada asalnya itu adalah juga OER, Open Educational Resources. Now, this is another big thing ni, OER ni. OER ni pun sejuk, suam sejuk, apa kata suam-suam kuku, sekejap sekejuk, sekejap panas. Sebenarnya dia berganding rapat. OER is about content, basically. OER is basically content. MOOC is a course, standalone course. Micro credential pun is a course. Tapi maybe you know you you, you can break down the course into smaller smaller modular unit. Itu dia micro credential, basically. MOOC forever free, micro-credential for profit. Okay, so itu antara perbezaan dia. Tapi semua ni, dia berkait rapat. Yeah, you can use the content, you can share. Kalau tak larang nak buat satu MOOC, satu topik buat satu MOOC, yang, yang mungkin lebih take about four weeks to complete, start dulu dengan buat OER. Buat video, sikit-sikit. Uh, kemudian dah apa ni, uh, put, bawa semua video tadi tu, buat satu MOOC. Uh, start dengan OER dulu. Kalau kalau tak nak start buat satu complete course, macam tu boleh juga. Step by step kan, pelan-pelan. So kita nak sokong SDG 4, which is ensure exclusive, inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning. Lifelong learning pun satu agenda dan di dalam blueprint juga. So kita akan dapat sokong shift number nine, which is globalized online learning, 
kita akan sokong shift number 8 ya live long learning shift number apa tak ingat okey so kita boleh shift sokong shift number 1 because the part of apa ni apa orang kata nurturing the talent balance and holistic dan sebagainya tu apa lagi banyak shift boleh kita buat ni bila kita buat terlibat dalam buat MOOC dengan micro credential ni so UTHM boleh claim lah kata kami menyokong agenda-agenda shift-shift lonjakan dalam blueprint kami juga menyokong SDG banyak SDG UTHM boleh sokong ni selain dari sebab you all engineering kan banyak SDG daripada 17 tu mungkin hampir semua so kita nak gunakan ni to reach out global now kita kena go global dia tak boleh go Singapore je sebab ada Singapore dekat kan so go global so ini cerita masa hangat dulu tahun 2012 wah you tengok semua baca sana tulis kiri muk, tulis kanan muk, tengok atas muk, semua muk, muk, muk menteri kita YB Datuk Seri Idris sampai ke sudah sampai dia habis jadi menteri dia mok 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 <laughs> orang muk dia mok orang dah betulkan muk dia cakap mok juga mok mok lah lantar lah <laughs> Habis dia, satu Sri Idris tak jadi menteri. Muk, 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 muk. Senyap terus. Okay, senyap terus. So, itulah dia. Globalize, globalize online learning. Learning ni saya rasa bangga lah. Sebab saya terlibat dengan arwah Profesor Anafi ni. Kami menulis ni. Ini USM ni claim ni. Ya, yeah. globalize online learning. Shift number nine tu kami yang tu dia tu. Okay. InsyaAllah, Alhamdulillah Inilah tujuan kita Access, quality, ha, tu dia Yang ini cerita masa hangat ni dulu Dr. Doria pun mungkin ada terlibat juga Dr. Doria ya, Zainal Dr. Zainal, Hemi ha, Ni mana, ada, ada tak Hemi kat dalam ni? Ada tak gambar you all? Ha. Ni, Profesor Mushtaq Ini ni awak keluar, keluar. Ha, Arwah, Profesor Hafi ha, Inilah dia Kami bagi training ni kami dah jadi akap tu dah jadi orang kata apa second home lah masa tu Alhamdulillah nak bawa 20 Malaysian Public University untuk buat MOOC sampailah kita lancarkan sampailah kita lancarkan MOOC tersebut pada bulan September 2014 ha, ni tarikh keramat dia I don't know whether you were there Dr. Doria masa pelancaran ni yang recall tadi 2018 tu kok yang... ha, ini 2014 2014 saya ha, ini kita lancar ni masa tu apa ni signing signing ceremony among ha, you Datuk Datuk Syarin ya yeah. tu dia saya coach chairman dengan dia ya dan ini buku yang ditulis uh, copy table bagi siapa mereka yang nak tahu sejarah lebih lanjut lagi download buku ni dan saya dah share chapter yang saya tulis eh, chapter tu uh, dalam dalam chat box so inilah dia tujuan kita jadi moving forward kita kena ada strategic intent, saya dah sebut tadi, kena ada roadmapnya. Yang ini applicable untuk MOOC dan juga micro-credential. Ya, yeah? micro-credential. So, um, sama ada kita buat MOOC ataupun micro-credential, kita kena jelas. Itu tadi saya sebut dah. Kita kena jelas strategic intentnya, bukan hanya nak nak ikut-ikut, nak orang kata uh, kebersamaan. No, no, no. Bukan sahaja kebersamaan, tapi you kena ada you punya own agenda and your own clear direction. Yang ni top management lah sebenarnya. Top management daripada VC ni. Daripada VC mereka yang kena sebenarnya kena jelas apa yang mereka nak. The strategic intent for the whole UTHM. For the whole university. Ini platform yang kita guna Open Learning. Dan ini uh, peringkat awal dulu lah ya. Yang kita, oh no no, ini ya yeah, ya yeah, some of the early MOOC. Ini USM punya MOOC platform. Uh, kemudian daripada OCW ke OER, OER ke MOOC, MOOC kepada Micro Credential. Tu dia kata apa pening lah perkara ni kalau kat USA. Dah MOOC pun tak habis lagi Micro Credential pula. Apa je lah dia ni kan. Bila lah dia nak pencen. Udah-udah lah tu. Ya, kalau berak kata udah-udah lah tu tak larat mereka dah. <laughs> ini lah namanya advocacy. You know, you tak boleh stay OER, OER je. Kemudian MOOC. Kemudian tengok. Kita tengok apa yang baru dan kita bawa benda ni. Kalau, kalau kita nampak kebaikan dan dia memberikan impact yang tinggi, kita champion. Kita championkan dia. 
kita menjadi perintis. Ya, yeah? we want to be the trailblazer tau. We want to be the trailblazer at least for our university. So ini senario-senario lah, ya. Yeah? Saya hanya bagi ini very quick one. Uh, I think the, the rest of the slide you can go through. Cuma uh, micro credential ni pada saya, this is the next big thing. This is the next big thing. Kita boleh buat bersekali. Buat micro credential dengan MOOC ini bersekali. Sebab mereka sama. You know? Kalau you start dengan, saya selalu sarankan, korang start dulu kalau bagi mereka yang betul-betul baru, start dengan buat content dulu, OER. Kemudian okay, slowly, slowly buat MOOC. Bila dia dah ada pengalaman, kemahiran, kepakaran, dah rasa selesa, uh, baru dia tengok, okay, dia nak MOOC tadi for free lah. Kemudian sekarang ni, dia MOOC tadi dia ambil satu topik saja daripada yang katakan khusus 14 minggu. Ataupun could be standalone MOOC yang tak ada kaitan dengan academic course pun, boleh juga. Kemudian buat, sekarang ni okay, sekarang ni why not kita buat Ambil kita create satu program, dalam program ni ada lima kursus Lima kursus ni kita pecahkan kepada modul-modul yang lebih kecil Tapi setiap modul nanti stand alone Sebab ada orang nak ambil satu modul je Ada orang nak ambil the whole package ha, dia, Itu itu konsep micro-credential uh, Of course, saya tak ada banyak masa untuk saya huraikan yang ini Tapi dia berkait rapat If you want to learn more about micro-credential Dalam YouTube channel saya Ada banyak video-video yang telah saya potong-potong Jadi segmen-segmen yang pendek The whole A to Z concept of micro credential is there. If you want to learn more about micro credential, tapi saya ingin menyarankan kita boleh buat dua-dua. Dia berjalan sekali. MOOC, micro credential, MOOC for free, micro credential for profit. But both akan bagi visibility. You can do it, use it for branding, and use it for positioning. Positionkan you punya program tu supaya dia nampak unik. Ha, jadi orang tahu, oh program ni memang ni. Ha, sebab dia dah nampak, dia dah ambil banyak MOOC, dah ambil banyak micro-credential yang berkaitan dengan program itu. Itu maksudnya positioning. So that is intentional positioning by design. Ha, itu nama by design tadi tu. Okay. So kita kena dapat dulu kita punya big picture tadi tu. Dari segi strategic intent tu ada big picture dia. Okay. Jangan kita buat piecemeal. Kalau banyak orang buat piecemeal, jadi dia cacang merbah jadinya. Akhirnya, tak tahu nak ke mana. Kan? So, the rest tu saya lock, saya skip je lah. Uh, ini semua pasal micro credential. Okay. Mungkin you all pernah attend my other talk about micro credential. Otherwise, uh, there's a lot of video on YouTube yang saya telah rakamkan khusus untuk micro credential. Okay. So, ini target group kita lah untuk micro credential ni ya. Then it is where you can actually use micro credential for profit maknanya untuk income generation. Kita perlu membantu universiti ya. I don't know how much UTHM terjejas, tapi USM memang terjejas teruk lah. Research university sebenarnya lagi terjejas akibat daripada apa ni pemotongan ni. Uh, berbanding dengan non research university ya. Zero operational budget or zero opex. Emolument pun sekarang dah terjejas. So sekarang bayar gaji kena gunakan duit sendiri. Bayangkan. Kan kita tak pernah terbayang kita sebagai you know staff dalam government punya ni gaji kita boleh terancam. Ah ha, tu USM lah, UTHM okey okey lagi kot I don't know. Tak ha, UTHM okey kot sebab dia tak usik emolument. Yang usik emolument ni uh, RU. Emolument dah kena usik dah. Bayangkan. So akhirnya ini Enam take away uh, You know Tapi I just rangkumkan je lah Rangkumkan saya nak kata Marilah kita Buat MOOC Dengan bersungguh-sungguh Dan juga micro credential Sebab There's a lot of it A lot A lot in it yeah? In focus For the university For the nation And for you as well Okay So it will give you a lot of visi visibility yeah? So Yes, stay safe, stay hungry, stay foolish, kata Steve Jobs. Saya kata stay strong sebab kan, kenapa stay strong ni penting tau. Nak buat benda ni kena banyak energy. Yeah? Kena banyak pengorbanan. <laughs> banyak pengorbanan, banyak energy, masa. 
So memanglah kita kata, wow, there's so much on my plate, bro. Of course, I have also so much on my plate. So we have the same cake, 24 hours cake. Pandai pandai lah, kan? So you need to be strong and very strategic about it. Kita kena buat macam-macam, of course. Semua orang kena buat macam-macam. So I'm not going to say or tell you how you're going to do it, but somehow you have to do it. So that's the one slide that you want to take the picture because uh, you want to download the PowerPoint here. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can also copy. Uh, I have to, yeah. I copy the link dalam chat box. Sebab tenang sikit. You all boleh click towards. Oops. Sorry. Masih boleh nampak slide saya? Itu Doria, masih boleh nampak slide saya? Masih Prof, masih uh, uh, Saya nampak Dr. Aziman ada dalam ni Dr. Aziman Dr. Aziman kan UMP uh, Bukan Prof, Aziman UTHM oh, UTHM, oh ok So itu saya ada bagi link dalam chat box boleh download terus dan dalam slide yang saya bagi tu ada juga last slide tu saya bagi link-link yang lain if you are interested to I mention about my blog article tadi my blog walaupun saya dah share dalam chat box tu tapi mungkin tak semua dapat catch so it is here but basically I would like to uh, apa ni uh, encourage all of you to find time have a look at our USM punya ini USM punya MOOC uh, So setiap kategori tu boleh check lah, ada banyak MOOC di bawah setiap kategori tu uh, Tahun ni insyaAllah kita akan dapat 70-80 lagi yang baru Melalui MOOC challenge yang kita buat uh, Saya juga invite you all semua uh, join this group Aspiring Young Academics Sebab di sini saya share macam, you know saya very active ni sharing all the good stuff Saya dah bagi link juga dalam slide tadi dan juga dalam chat box Come and join us because uh, you know you will be keep up to date dengan new things, uh, resources dan bagai-bagai macam-macam benda yang lain yang berguna yang saya share uh, check out my website ini tadi saya kata gateway to the world remember selain daripada you punya MOOC uh, nanti kalau you dah ada MOOC, you boleh letaklah di bawah resources ni linkkanlah semua you punya MOOC semua di sini ya yeah? macam tu uh, ataupun uh, buat kalau macam ni macam saya punya ni about so di sebelah tu uh, linkkan semua ni ya yeah? supaya orang boleh nampak semua you punya apa ni web presence di situ online courses and for all you know people will come these are the doors tadi saya sebut so saya buka ada satu dua pintu saya ada banyak pintu mungkin tak tahu berapa ya ini yang saya senaraikan tak yang baru-baru ni saya belum masukkan lagi tak sempat sebab puluh berpuluh pintu nak masuk dalam you punya rumah banyaknya <laughs> so itu yang saya masukkan dengan visibility dan bukan saja kita nak visibility ni nak menunjuk-nunjuk. Jangan fikir pasal menunjuk. Orang akan mengata kita. Adalah orang yang akan mengata tu. Tapi setakat saya yang saya tahu saya tak pernah dengar orang mengata saya mungkin kat belakang lah kan. Tak tahulah. Tapi tak apalah saya ampunkan. Uh, tapi ada orang yang akan mengata. Oh Prof Karim tu dia gila. Dok tunjulkan dia punya. Ah, tak apa. Ada, ada orang yang akan kata begitu. Pedulikan. Pedulikan. Jangan ambil pot orang kata. Because dia orang tak tahu. Inilah dia pintu-pintu yang menjemput peluang ke rumah kita. I I, I don't know how much I want to ni tapi memang I I can I maybe insyaallah I will write a book on that. The opportunity that come with all this. Maybe I should write a book on this. Supaya orang faham mengapa mereka perlu ada benda-benda ni. Buat MOOC sebanyak mungkin. Ini semua yang online courses saya. Ah uh, tapi ada banyak lagi yang saya tak buat. Saya punya saya punya modul-modul yang dalam Google Site tu uh, saya rasa lebih daripada 10 uh, yang baru-baru lah tak masukkan lagi ni. Tak masukkan. Ini mula lama-lama ni. Tak update lagi ni. Social media present dan sebagainya ya. Yeah. Uh, blog. Saya nak galakkan you all semua bagi siapa yang tak ada blog, tulislah blog. Saya dah uh, ini salah satu contoh artikel Dr. Doria, Dr. Sabaria semua. Artikel ni bila ada orang baca daripada University of Nottingham kebetulan mereka nak me, they want to organize satu conference berkenaan dengan sustainability dia baca artikel ni dia kata oh your article is 
very good lah, apa-apa So we want to invite you as a keynote speaker pula. Dapat pula peluang dapat keynote speaker. Just from this blog article. Percaya tak? Ya? Yeah? Percaya lah. Tak, 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 saya nak tipu kan. Uh, ini saya punya artikel on tadi tu. Secret Garden. Dan itu sajalah. Dan akhir sekali. Saya nak jemput all of you. Untuk uh, melawat uh, apa yang kita panggil ni. E-book publishing platform, self-publishing dan anda semua dijemput untuk publish dan jual buku-buku e-book dalam platform ini ya. uh, saya dah bagi ke link sebelumnya uh, saya copy link e-book platform saya bagi dalam chat box tu, dalam slide tu ada juga kot ok, eh bukan, bukan, bukan yang tu bukan yang tu uh, Please join the Facebook secret checkout. Okay, yang tu ya, link yang saya post dalam chat. So itu sahaja. Terima kasih saya. Saya ucapkan terima kasih. Sorry terlebih sikit masa. Uh, tapi mungkin kalau ada lagi soalan-soalan kita boleh uh, ber, ber apa ni? Ber, bersoal jawab. Uh, feel free to ask anything. So thank you once again to Uh, Dr. Doria, Dr. Sabaria, UTHM yang sudi menjemput saya dan berkongsi sedikit sebanyak. Saya harap saya telah memberikan satu uh, injection vaksin yang ketiga tadi tu, third booster tadi tu, to boost, to boost your motivation and spirit uh, to do MOOC, uh, apa ni, and, and also my credential in any online online initiative in the future. So with that, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to Dr. Doria. Okey, so terima kasih banyak-banyak Prof. Karim. Saya rasa semua banyak tadi kan, input-input yang sangat-sangat um, bermanfaat untuk kita semua, uh, khususnya untuk rakan-rakan staff yang ingin membangunkan uh, MOOC dan juga micro credential dan juga education technology yang uh, saya rasa pasti rakan-rakan semua uh, sangat hebat eh, mungkin dalam satu-satu teknologi ke ataupun pendekatan uh, PDP yang digunakan. Uh, mungkin sebelum uh, kita akhiri ni Prof, uh, ada beberapa soalan daripada rakan-rakan kan mungkin just a quick feedback daripada prof um, ada uh, mungkin saya boleh simpulkan eh, apa apa soalan spot soalannya yang pertama adalah berkenaan dengan um, apakah uh, strategi yang mungkin prof selak, acap kali uh, terapkan contohnya ialah kita ada kita ada courses kita sendiri tapi lepas tu ada outsider study daripada Peru ada daripada orang luar kan so macam mana uh, prof uh, strategikan masa untuk Um, apa tu untuk uh, engage kepada pelajar-pelajar ni ataupun uh, followers prof lah dan juga yang kedua uh, adalah berkenaan dengan uh, mungkin ini adalah strategic planning daripada pihak pengurusan USM uh, macam mana uh, pengorganisasian uh, kepada hasil nyemuk dan juga micro credential bermula daripada mungkin uh, ada Um, video takers dia ada instructional designer dan, dan sebagainya itu yang kedua uh, dan yang ketiga tadi saya rasa daripada soalan Prof uh, Munzila yang bertanyakan uh, berapa lama sebenarnya Prof dah buat ni uh, contohnya macam YouTube tadi blog tadi so itu saya rasa mungkin hari nak buat bukan esok ya Prof saya rasa panjang masanya ha. jadi itu antara tiga soalan yang saya rasa saya saya dapat ambil eh, daripada rakan-rakan ok Prof ok uh, Dr. Doria thank you <coughs> uh, engagement tadi tu uh, macam tadi saya sebut awal tadi kan ideally memanglah kita nak cuba engage dengan uh, because the engagement is one of the most important and critical issue dalam any online course MOOC ni basically asynchronous lah yeah. kan basically asynchronous. So, um, the way we design uh, kita punya apa ni, kita punya course, um, most of the engagement tu boleh berlaku melalui learning activities yang kita dah design for them. Uh, so, so, yang itu there's another topic. Another one is of course maybe apa ni, uh, through the, the discussion or discussion forum. And this is this where maybe you you want to try your best to engage with all your students the the front part is you tapi sebenarnya the mungkin you can you can get your kind of graduate student ke apa ke to to help uh, but they are doing it on your behalf 
Jadi mana so, orang student masih lagi nampak seolah-olah you lah kan. Uh, you don't have to personally answer I think uh, all the macam question ke whatever yourself. Kadang-kadang soalan-soalan tu become sama. So what you can do, you can kumpulkan semua then you can make uh, a quick this 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 why I do eh. I make a quick video satu minit dua minit ya. Yeah. Just with one click uh, gunakan apa ni a uh, I'm still sharing my screen kan. Ha. So, macam contohnya, katalah I nak terangkan something dia, I just click my loom here. Uh, okay. So, uh, eh, nampak. Ha, tu. And then, uh, di sini biasa pakai loom ya. Eh. Uh, with one click aja, I can start recording blah 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 blah. One, two minutes. Uh, okay, uh, there's, there's a question on this one. So, uh, let, let me... Eh, answer let me address this in one uh, video uh, two minutes video so then after that you post then then start recording uh, then big share oops katakan full screen then i'm recording now three two one zero so oh, so habis right. dan dah siap dah satu video And then dah, dah ini boleh jadi konten dah ataupun boleh can be the apa ni the 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 content that you use to respond to your oops. So, okay so uh, right apa so itu dia contoh very quick one ya yeah. uh, you can create a very quick video just to respond so there's many ways lah for student engagement then support system Tadi saya sempat ada soalan daripada apa tadi kan Prof Osni tadi tu Can you briefly share how USM help the lecturers on more instructional design? Do you have a dedicated instructional designer? So our model is like this um, Arwah Prof Hanafi sahabat saya tu dia gunakan istilah rainbow model Rainbow eh? Rainbow ah, Rainbow model Tapi kan macam ataupun Swiss knife Yang ada macam-macam benda boleh buat So uh, our, our model is Our subject matter expert ataupun SME, they are also the course developer, the MOOC developer, the micro credential developer. So we give them training, we provide training. So we provide provide training for them so that they can create the course on their own. So we give them training on the ID instructional design. We give them ID on how to create online course. We give them training how to use the open learning platform. We give all the necessary training so that we can equip them with necessary skill and they can create the course on their own. Kemudian kita akan bantu sometimes uh, then uh, CDAE, my center and also PTPM, another one we also provide uh, some technical support in case some of them want to do like studio shooting and so on so they come to our studio Then my staff will handle all the shooting, and then the video. Uh, they uh, we give the lecturers for them to edit. Some lecturers maybe some lecturers they just surrender. They say we I cannot do the video editing. In that case, in that case for those cases, we will help them. But as much as we can, we let the lecturers to be their to be the course developer because that is more sustainable. That is more sustainable Because kalau kita nak provide Satu team, dedicated team Untuk develop Macam sekarang, macam sekarang ni Michael Credential Kami ada tiga ratus enam puluh There is no way we can afford You need, you really need a huge Team No, that is expensive Not sustainable And it will take long time For one course to Be completed So I think from the experience, uh, I have found that our model is workable uh, and more sustainable and cost effective. And these people, the more they do it, the more they become more and more expert. In fact, some of them now start to teach other people. Ah, macam tu. Tapi Tadi Dr. Doria kata, how long does it take to reach this level? 
Panjang tu kok dia begitu. Panjang, panjang. So dia kena kesabaran yang tinggi. Remember Rome was not built in a day. So begitulah. Uh, dia perlukan satu perjalanan yang panjang dan semua orang pun begitu juga. Kalau baru bagi siapa yang baru bermula ni, sebab saya nampak tadi dia, dia uh, kata dah bersemangat nak buat ni. Dr. Doria. Ya. Yeah. Uh, so good, good. So if you bersemangat tu maknanya uh, I have done my job lah. Tetapi kan as usual you know very well semangat dan motivasi tu can go only that far. <laughs> Kalau dalam, dalam apa ni, chemical reaction kan, nak sampai ke tahap activation energy tu. Yes. Ah, So, activation nak sampai tu kat sini lah. So, motivation will push you sampai situ je. Hey, you need to connect the last mile tu. Yes. yes. Ah, So, in order for you to reach that activation energy tu, you kena start now. Lepas ni kena terus buat. Kalau tidak motivation tu dia akan die off. Motivation ni that's why kalau pergi orang yang pergi banyak motivation course ni kadang-kadang dia tengok tak berubah sangat pun. Sebab apa tau? Dia pergi tu semangat wah berkobar-kobar. Tapi bila balik tu dia dia procrastinate, dia tak dia tak apa orang kata apply apa yang ni apa ni, dia tak jadi habit. Dia tak ini dia, dia mati balik. So itulah uh, dia memakan masa yang panjang kena banyak betul-betul kesabaran tapi kalau kita buat as a team kalau kita ada a pool of people sama-sama buat sama-sama bagi encouragement sama-sama jaga kita jaga kita itu yang berlaku dalam nursing group yang kita baru lancarkan tujuh modul bulan tujuh itu dia orang ni setahun juga lah setahun lebih sikit juga nak siapkan tu tujuh modul tu perancangan asalnya 18 tapi dapat siap tujuh dulu kau okey lah dah roll out dah tapi depa ni satu ha ini rahsia dia yang saya nampak belajar daripada dia orang ni dia lantik satu koordinator yang memang highly committed agresif agresif committed so dia buat satu WhatsApp saya pun ada dekat dalam tu saya tengok je lah rancak dia punya communication tu kemudian dia dia orang ada timeline dia saya saya duk juga jemput kalau Dr Doria boleh jemput saya boleh bagi nama ni Okay, dia sure. boleh cerita dia punya proses nak buat micro credential tu memang memang kita tengok tu saya sendiri pun persona tau lah kagum kagum sebab this group kan bila saya mula-mula bagi training kat dia orang saya berulang kali kat Kelantan tu dia orang ni kat Kelantan ni ya. saya berulang kali empat kali tu empat lima kali tu Penang bagi training kat dia orang first time saya bagi training ini saya cerita kat dia orang ni first time saya bagi training kat dia orang tu ramai group ke 30 orang Bila saya tengok level of kemahiran yang dia orang ada dalam hati saya saya kata masya-Allah jadi ke apa ni nak buat so basic dia punya skill tau nak buat micro credential tapi banyak benda yang basic pun tak tahu so saya dah saya dah mula pessimistic tapi because of dia punya commitment yang tinggi depa ni depa ni semua dan koordinator dia bersungguh siap Siapa tak ikut deadline, dia akan kejar. Dia kata, eh, hey, we, we need to report this. Oh, saya tengok kat dalam WhatsApp punya kemajuan. Wow, betul lah, barulah dia jadi. Dia follow dia punya timeline tu. Tidak ada kompromis. Baru jadi. Ah, dia kena bersungguh macam itu. Tapi, ah, dalam grup tu, ada berapa, 20 lebih orang, masih-masih bagi encouragement. Oh, tak apa, Wati. Ah, kalau apa, nanti saya tolong you. Uh, tak apa nama jangan bimbang apa ni. Oh tak apa nanti kita buat arrangement dengan apa ni untuk bagi training ni, bagi ni 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 ni. Hmm. Kalau dia dapat satu benda yang mana dia akan kongsi dalam kumpulan tu. So masing-masing orang kata me 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 memberikan uh, apa orang kata semangat antara satu sama lain. Ah itu yang kita perlukan. Itu sebab peribahasa Afrika kata apa? If you want to go fast you go alone. If you want to go far go together. Semangat pasukan itu yang sangat penting. Ya. Yeah. So betul lah kata Dr. Rosli, Dr. Rosni tu motivation, knowledge plus action. Tak mau NATO ya. Eh. NATO ni no action talk only. So itulah kot. Uh, saya menjawab kot. Harap uh, ada tak yang saya tak jawab tadi? Ya, yeah, alhamdulillah prof. Uh, okay. Okay. Baik. Jadi soalan? Ah, 
Uh, uh. Kalau one last call, kalau uh. ada soalan sebelum kita akhiri uh, sesi webinar kita pada hari ini. Pak Nur pun beliau boleh jemput Pak Prime Pak ya. Okay. Saya cuba saya, saya tunjuk dengan kau ada soalan yang terlepas. Okay. Okay. Can we engage? Okay. One last call kalau ada uh, daripada rakan-rakan. Ada ke? Yeah, by, by the way eh, tadi Dr. Doria tadi ni how long kan? Kalau tengok yang semua yang saya buat selama ni kan, yang khusus-khusus apa yang saya buat tu, uh, itulah jangan-jangan fikir benda ni apa ni boleh buat dengan mudah ya, memang dia makan masa lah. So buat sikit-sikit ya, -sikit, yeah. buat sikit-sikit insyaAllah. Satu course siap, satu course uh, dalam dalam kita tak sedari tengok-tengok. Actually bila saya tengok balik apa yang saya dah buat ya, eh, saya sendiri tak percaya. Saya sendiri tak percaya. Tengok ish. Saya so, sendiri boleh tanya-tanya tau, where did I find the strength? Yes. Where did I find the time? Saya so, sendiri tau, kalau fikir, ish, kalau, kalau, uh, beli, macam saya baru habis siapa satu buku, oh ya, yeah, yeah, terlupa. Mungkin last kali Dr. Doria, if you don't mind, apa ni, saya nak tunjukkan buku ni, sebab buku ni saya nak lancarkan, keluarkan besok insyaAllah, mungkin hari ni juga, uh, yang ni ya, yeah, buku ni, uh, Buku ni, 304, 305 page, 305 page, eh? 25 ways to apa ni, teach your students to think ni. Uh, saya mahu ambil masa 2 bulan. 2 bulan. Antara in between meetings, workshop, macam ni, seminar, webinar ni, macam ni kan. Curi-curi masa macam tu dan malam. Tapi dalam 2 bulan yang lepas ni, malam pun saya tak boleh buat banyak sebab masa badan agak kurang sihat lately so tapi akhirnya siap bila saya tengok file saya bila saya mula buat tu 4 Julai so lebih kurang 2 bulan lah bila itu saya cakap dengan my wife ish dia dah siap lah tapi bila saya tengok saya macam tak percaya saya macam tak percaya hmm. macam mana saya boleh hasilkan ni tapi itulah bila kita ada suatu purpose yang jelas kita are, we are driven by our purpose by our clear purpose and our is the clarity of purpose is there and therefore you find the energy somehow this is something that difficult to to explain but what's drive you is your intrinsic motivation that is very very powerful jadi carilah carilah that purpose and carilah that intrinsic motivation as far as smoke is concerned insyaallah dia akan mendatangkan banyak kebaikan pada diri sendiri dan juga pada organisasi institusi student kita dan uh, yang lain-lain so terima kasih banyak-banyak uh, prof Karin atas perkongsian uh, daripada pukul 9 uh, pukul 10 tadi ya uh, banyak sebanyak intipati yang telah dikongsikan oleh prof uh, antaranya mungkin yang yang take home note yang boleh kita dapat bersama adalah uh, contohnya untuk kita cuba uh, cari ya, niche area ataupun engineering ataupun keypad area yang kita mungkin um, akan kita buat untuk MOOC dan sebagainya uh, dan juga mungkin kena jaga juga lah kualiti uh, dan juga uh, perancangan ya, macam mana untuk kita meneruskan dan memantapkan uh, MOOC ataupun modul yang kita hasilkan lah khusus untuk uh, kelestarian ilmu yang kita nak kongsikan kepada orang lah. Itu saya rasa. Dan juga apa yang saya dapat daripada Aura tadi adalah um, niat tu, Prof. Eh? Uh, niat tu yang saya rasa uh, the driving force untuk kita moving forward lah. And then good, being good deeds um, uh, to others. Uh, so uh, I think uh, on behalf uh, on behalf of the webinar, uh, MOOC and Ed Education Technology Organizer, uh, we would like to say thank you very much to Prof. Uh, Prof Karim and also uh, to our loyal participants, um, thank you very much eh, for all the commitment and um, sorry for all the shortcomings from us um, and also we really hope that Prof, um, this will not be the last session for us and also maybe perhaps we can actually invite you coming over to UTHM after we uh, achieve the uh, herd immunity, eh, insyaAllah. Eh. Uh, so harapnya sudilah bertandang ke USM. Saya rasa kita pernah jemput nak 
jemput prof tapi ada je obstacle-nya tetapi insyaallah mungkin um, mungkin rezeki selepas pandemik uh, insyaallah yeah. menjadi satu realiti lah kita jemput prof insyaallah Okay, so um, sebelum kita akhiri majlis ini, ada baiknya untuk kita akhiri dengan tasbih kafarah dan surah wa'az dan sebelum itu juga, selepas itu kita ambil uh, sesi photo taking bersama dengan Prof dan juga rakan-rakan yang lain. Eh. Okay, TMCT Hawa ada juga dekat sini Prof, uh, beliau baru masuk juga ni. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, so... Hai, apa khabar? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Alright, so kita ambil uh, foto tadi sekejap eh. Minta semua untuk on camera. Okay. So, smile. Maintainkan smile eh. Satu, dua, tiga. Okay, another shot. Okay. Lagi. Satu, dua, tiga, smile. Okay, boleh? Lagi. Satu, dua, tiga. Boleh? Lagi ya? Eh? Ada banyak page ya? Eh? Uh, sekejap ya. Eh? Okay, maintain, maintain. <laughs> sekejap, okay. One, two, three. One. Satu, dua, tiga. Kekalkan senyuman. Dia macam awet muda sekarang ya. Sebagi. <laughs> okay. Kita ada kru belakang kabel untuk snap sekejap ya. Okay, what? lagi. Kalau masa face to face tak boleh macam ni eh Prof eh. <laughs> Time ni dah dah, dah dah boleh cium bau apa bau lak sejohor dah. <laughs> oh iya ke? <laughs> InsyaAllah bro. Fabulous saya tu lak sejohor. Ah so yang the last one I think masa tu Prof kita buat dekat UTM Uh, yang uh, apa tu uh, saya rasa saya dengar yang prof pergi dengan prof Hanafi Hanafi kan dekat yeah, yeah, yeah. stall tu ha. saya kalau balik kampung ke Shah Alam saya selalu pergi makan di restoran Azira section 10 dia punya laksa Johor dia wow by best oh, okey Mungkin ada uh, apa tu aura daripada tanah Johor sendiri tu bro. Tak boleh pergi 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 Johor juga lah yang yang apa asli punya kan. Ya insyaallah. Okay so thank you very much uh, semua. Terima kasih uh, atas kesudian semua lah untuk hadir pada sesi pagi. Terima kasih semua ya. Yeah. Take care everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe. <laughs> Stay safe. Yeah, Stay safe. Also. <laughs> okay assalamualaikum. Okay. Thank you bro. Thank you bro. Bye. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih. 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 Terima kas